Well, hello, football fans. Welcome to the NFL version of ProLine. I'm John Creighton in Las Vegas, joined by Vegas experts Harvard Barnhart and Zach Simony. Got three NFL games to talk about. Got some red hot handicappers here, too. Harvard is 16 and 4 with his high end 10 star plays, 37 and 20 with all football plays. Zach, 33 and 17 in college, 20, 12 and 1 in the NFL. And we're off that Monday night game. Harvard, uh, did you enjoy that puppy? Well, I tell you, I was playing poker the whole time. Uh, <laughs> the whole time that was going on, and I'll tell you what I did. I had a big bet on Indianapolis, just a straight bet, taking the the uh, points. Then I made a huge bet on the uh, money line on Indianapolis, parlayed to the over. So when they had it, I, I don't. I guess it was like the start of the fourth quarter. Uh, Carolina was twenty-three to six. I tried to start selling pieces of my parlay bet. It's paying four and a half to one. Half price. You know, so I thought, well, maybe I could get some idiot out there to, uh, you know, think. Uh, and the more, uh, all of a sudden, it went from 23 to 6 to 23 to 13. And now I knew it would get to 23 to 20. And I had no idea it could get to overtime. And then once it gets to overtime, I'm thinking, wow, I could actually win this. It could go over. And I could hit that, uh, that uh, money line parlay. And I got almost there, so I'm dressed in black today. I'm burying my money line ticket. Four and a half to one, though, on a stupid game there where you make that comeback like that. That was uh, very devastating, and uh, it, it mentally just absolutely crushed me to get so close to winning that game on the money line. So, uh, and I know Zach had. Uh, uh, who did you have last night? I had the Colts as well. Right. But okay, I didn't, I didn't have I the parlay. Nice comeback. Uh, yeah, you're not supposed parlay. to parlay. That's why you're smart. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it was a uh, it was one of those games again. Even when Carolina grabbed that lead, you had a feeling the game wasn't over. Um, Carolina has been known to they just play those style of games. If they have a lead, that defense all of a sudden gets lax. If they're behind, all of a sudden the offense comes to life. And you know Andrew Luck, I'm not sure what's going on with him. T. Y. Hilton, I thought he actually Andrew Luck made a few good passes in overtime, but T. Y. Hilton dropped the ball. Uh, the backup tight end dropped the ball, so those guys have to have surer hands than that. But overall, I'm satisfied with the week. Uh, 33 and 17 in college football, and uh, two and one in NFL back-to-back -back weeks to improve the 20, 12 and one on the season. So 60% or higher in both sports. Speaking yeah. of dropping the ball, how 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 lucky is that, Teddy Jim? Uh, oh my goodness! Yeah, he dropped. I one mean, too. he dropped something. Oh. I think I could have caught. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, with with a hand in my face, I think I could have caught that. Yeah. You know, uh, and then he gets bailed out with a win. I mean, you know what? They don't deserve that. It's almost like when I have pocket aces and some guy calls with a nine four of spades, and uh, he cracks my aces because uh, there's a four flush out there, and he brings it. You know, it, it's just does it, it, you shouldn't be rewarded for bad play. Yeah, and if you had the under on that Monday night game, you really got robbed there with that late comeback. Reminds me of the last game of the World Series, which I had the under on, under Oof. seven, two nothing in the ninth. Hey, thanks a lot, uh, manager, <laughs> for blowing that game. <laughs> yeah, but those uh, those things do happen. Uh, all right, let's go, let's go to one of the Sunday games. We've got a terrific NFC matchup here, a uh, Green Bay against Carolina. And you know, when I first saw this betting line. Uh, it reminded me of that famous clip of Vince Lombardi on the sidelines. Hey, what the hell is going on out there? Green Bay is playing on the road. They're off this terrible game against Denver where they get just manhandled start to finish. And here they are, a road favorite, one and a half, now up to two against a Carolina team that, well, they won 11 in a row and they're undefeated. So a little bit baffling uh, to me on this one. Green Bay, though, another straight road game, another tough venue. So Harvard, what the hell's going on with this Green Bay team? Well, uh, if you remember last week during this show, I think I was... Uh, I was uh, getting my uh, guy on the phone and making bets on Green Bay against Denver as we were speaking. I mean, I, I had loaded too. on Green yeah. Bay, if you recall, and uh, you know. We both went down quick. Not that I want to remind anybody of that play, but uh, you know, that was one of my uh, losers. Uh, and I tell you what, I think uh, Green Bay and myself share the same uh, thought process. We both had to lose a little bit of confidence in the Green Bay Packers as they move forward. I mean, come on, what the hell happened? Aaron Rodgers, 77 yards passing? Uh, he looked like he uh, didn't even know what he was doing out there, and that was because of what? A great defense. Well, he's going to meet the same thing on the road this week with Carolina. I mean, those guys, they know how to play defense, and I think they'll finish the job. 
If you notice that this is a key game coming up. So far they're 7-0, but they have not beat a team with a winning record. Well, this gives them a chance to get that uh, moniker off their back. Uh, but the same D is going to be coming at them. Uh, I think that they were horrible as a favorite laying points in yesterday or last night's matchup, but when you turn it around and make them as an underdog, they're a very, very good underdog, even if they're only getting two points. Uh, Carolina, they're I NFC's only uh, unbeaten team, and uh, you know what? They might just move on to 8-0. Uh, Green Bay, they haven't played well on the road. It started off with that uh, uh, really a poor play when they moved, uh, went to San Francisco and just looked horrible there. And then, the, you know, finished it up Sunday uh, bad on the road there. So until they can do something on the road, until they can get their confidence back, uh, I'm going to stay with uh, Carolina and take the two points. Yeah, I wonder if it's, uh, if it's the Jordy Nelson effect with the Packer offense. Could be. When he went down in August, a big deal was made about it. But then you look at Aaron Rodgers' numbers, 15 touchdowns, two picks, and you have to think, you have a tendency to think, well, maybe this guy can do it with anybody. However, the offense has really plummeted now to 10th in passing. And what we saw in that national TV game against Denver was just an abysmal offensive performance. I mean, even the defense, too, gave up 500 yards. And the defensive coordinator seemed to be slow about making adjustments. I have a serious concerns about a team that is 6-1 and one, is still having a great season. Uh, and then there's Carolina. Let's call them the Rodney Dangerfield uh, team because <laughs> they're – They've won 11 games in a row now, and, you know, you look at the numbers, very strong on offense, number three in the NFL in rushing, the number six in points scored. They did it uh, with a nice comeback on Monday night, getting enough points to get the win. The defense has been great all season, and uh, they were only four of 16 on third down Monday night, but in the end, Cam Newton gets the job done. Two touchdowns, one pick. Jonathan Stewart chipped in 82 yards. So, Zach, I look at this game and think, boy, should they be a home dog here? I don't think so. You know, last week I was on the Denver Broncos, and uh, for the reasons that I talked about last week, would be some of the same uh, reasons I talk about here. The defense of the Carolina Panthers is capable of uh, holding down Aaron Rodgers. You're seeing the Green Bay Packers young receivers have issues getting open against uh, top tier defenses, and Aaron Rodgers. I mean, it was it was both ways for him on Sunday against the Broncos. He had all day on certain throws, and still couldn't find anybody to open. And then there were certain times he was just getting drilled because the uh, offensive line wasn't protecting him. But, you know, I've always had an issue with Mike McCarthy and uh, that Packers offense, co offensive play calls. I know he's not the play caller this year, but he and um, Aaron Rodgers have had issues. Uh, two to three game window every year where their play calling is just horrible. And I think they're in that stage right now. Um, Carolina Panthers, you know, they keep winning games ugly. Two, week, two wins in a row with Cam Newton not playing his best. A uh, couple interceptions again yesterday and three uh, against the Eagles, but they're still finding a way to win. Um, so I, I just think the momentum is with Carolina. It's hard to just pinpoint one or two key things. I just like the momentum Carolina has, and defensively I think they're going to hold it together and uh, get the job done. Yeah, I was surprised that the home dog too, so I'll back them. I'll also take a look at the total because Green Bay, when they face the NFC, 5-0 and over the total. Yes, their offense was is off that terrible game, but don't forget the defense was also exposed 500 yards. That's serious concerns against a quarterback, and Peyton Manning was, still has more picks than touchdowns this year. That's a major concern. And then this Carolina offense, uh, they, Cam Newton's very good. He's got plenty of targets. They can beat you with the run and the pass. They're on a 3-1-1 one and run, run over the total at home where they played their best offense, as we saw on Monday night. And finally, when these teams meet head-to-head, 5-0 and oh over the total. So I will uh, take a look at a higher-scoring game on Sunday.